Um, so an indecisive week, I would say. For the last two, in fact, month to date, the S&P's flattish, sitting on about a 6% year-to-date gain. I guess we can understand why the market is kind of mulling over alternate scenarios. We went from soft landing, becoming the assumed baseline to maybe no landing to maybe Fed's done, maybe they're not done. Um, and then a real risk on start to the year for stocks. So yeah. what's your read on that message and I guess how you should play it from here? So look, I think the first, you know, month and a half of the year, the three sectors that typically do the best after the Fed pauses ripped. I mean, you know, they're still up hugely so far this year. So essentially the market pulled forward the pause. And, now, and those sectors are which? Uh, technology, consumer discretionary, and communication services. So the three kind of uh, horsemen of global growth and or, or secular growth. And at any rate, you know, then we got the hawkish Fed speak. And frankly, I'm surprised we didn't get that a little bit earlier in the year. I was sort of wondering where it was. And so now we're seeing that trade exhale, take a bit of a breather. The market's taking a bit of a breather. Um, and I think it's logical. I mean, and I think it's, you know, I thought your comment about churning in the last hour was really appropriate because I think what people should be asking is why aren't we down more with all this hawkish Fed speak? I think the resilience has actually been pretty impressive. So you, you would take from that a sign that there is just, you know, better demand for stocks, more confidence in the sturdiness of the economy and not necessarily, you know, a trap that says, uh-oh, the Fed's going to have to knock the market down. I, I, think, I think the Fed's trying and it's not working as well as they would probably hope. But I think that, we're, you know, we have so many cross currents right now. It's so complex. But one of those important ones is that sentiment was washed out at the end of the year, whether you're looking at institutions on CFTC data or retail investors on the AAII data. And now both of those are starting to rebound and in my estimation are about kind of middle innings in that rebound. So add, you know, kind of the bearish view on these economy, the, the Fed expectation shifting back and forth, inflation expectation shifting. You've got a massive sentiment rebound that's about halfway done. That's really, in my opinion, propping this market up a bit. That washed out condition that you, that you mentioned in the market obviously gave way in January to a lot of of, you know, the riskier, lower quality, speculative stuff really ramping. Yeah. Um, and it always, every single time it happens, you have people coming out and scolding traders for buying the yeah. same old junk and saying that this is not a healthy way for a market to behave. Um, but your, your take on that is not necessarily that you should turn the yeah. other way. So remember, I'm an old small cap strategist. Exactly, so I've been talking yeah. about the junk for a long time. And, and apologies to my small cap PMs. <laughs> I don't think their stocks are junk. But the reality is that coming off the lows in the middle of every economic challenge period, whatever you want to call it, recession, big R, little r, we always see a negative earners, lower ROE, lower market cap, highly levered names. That stuff always works the most coming off the bottom. I've done this more than two decades. Mike, I know you've done it even yeah. longer, and people always make that protest. Oh, it's just short covering. Don't buy it. The rally's fragile. It's got to fall apart. That is a false protest that doesn't pan out every single time. And so, in general, for small caps, because, I mean, you're right, it's not as if the entire small cap index is lower quality. We're not yeah. just talking about those names. But I mentioned, you know, the Russell outperforms this week and year to date. Um, you know, it seems to go along with uh, some cyclical strength or, you know, leadership there. You still think that there's, there's a trade in there? I do. And, you know, look, I'm not as excited as I was in the middle of last year when we upgraded it. So I think, you know, that's probably also a middle innings kind of trade right now. Right. But I'm watching very closely the market cap weighted P.E. of the Russell 2000. So it is giving an edge to those more higher quality, bigger cap, more liquid names in small cap. So not a, not an approximation of the junk down there. And it's about, you know, kind of at its long term average on a forward P.E. There wasn't as much froth in those earnings estimates. You're around 15 times. You typically go up to about 19 or 20. We were down at 11. So you've got some room based on that barometer. You mentioned that the Fed seems to be trying to hold the market in check or maybe have it pull back a little bit or, or at least just keep an financial conditions from loosening too much. Um, presumably, they could do that if they really wanted to. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, there's a yield level that the market would not be able necessarily to absorb easily. Are we close to that, or do you think that's the way we're headed? So, look, I think that, the, you know, kind of the more we see rates move up and the more we see that Fed angst come back in, it's going to pull some of the wind out of the sails of these big cap growth stocks. And to really get a big market recovery, you do need stability there. They've been decimated, but they're still an enormous part of the market cap. So I don't think we're there quite yet. I think we've still got a bit of room. Um, we have a valuation model, and I'll spare you all the math, but we can see the 10-year, you know, probably move up closer to 4 percent before we really start to do damage to that model. Okay. Um, so I think we've got some room for now. And when you mentioned
given that we seem to be kind of halfway through the process of you know sentiment rebounding uh, and, and, and that sort of general repricing of, uh, of, of the uh, economic situation, does that mean you know simplistically that we have you know we're up six percent year to date on the S and P that there's that much upside or how would you read that? So I think it's really hard you know if you're a strategist right and, and I'm not trying nobody should cry for me but look <laughs> I, I think the reality is we're all trying to guess the December 31st price on the S and P. We've said that some of our models point to upside to around 4,500, 4,600. Our target's 4,100. Okay. But I do sit here with, you know, a, a 10 months left in the year, essentially, and say I can see a scenario where we could run up maybe to that bull case scenario and then trade back down. We do worry about the possibility of people fretting about recession in 2024. It's too early to price that in right now, but we could start to do that later this year. The debt ceiling, I think, is something that's not at everybody, the forefront of everybody's mind, but it's kind of in the back of everybody's sure. mind. And, I, you know, I, I'm not looking forward to the idea of engaging in that drama this summer.